this week's episode, PlayStation's State of Play and Nintendo's Indie World. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to One of Me, episode 87, where once again, we will one-up all your video game news. My name is Ryan Smith, and I'm joined, as always... By Jordan Sims, and before Jordan introduces himself, I would like to just say that we are releasing this one day late because Nintendo and PlayStation both ha- both had their uh, these own little event shows that they released on YouTube. PlayStation had their State of Play, and Nintendo had their Indie World. So if anyone has been wondering where the episode is, we decided to wait one day. That way, we we didn't have to do all that. Plus, next week. We have to. We're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to cover the game awards. So just to make it easier on, on us and just to get you guys your news quicker, we decided to wait one day late. There you go. How are you doing, Jordan? Good. It's very late. It is very late, and it snowed today thrice. It did. It snowed three times. I knew it snowed twice. I didn't know. Yeah. Wow. It, it like started and then stopped and then it rained and then that rain turned to snow and then that went away and then it snowed again. Yes, it's been very cold. Also, I do want to mention, if we sound different, we are using a different microphone. So, if we sound worse, I apologize for that. Jordan's microphone is broken, so we're just using mine now, which we have never used alone by itself. We're trying to get some new microphones. That's still in the works. But for now, we're just kind of deal with what we have. Yep. <laughs> so it's and been a lean a little closer to the microphone. That's right. It's been a very interesting week from everything uh, that's been going on. But I did manage to have a couple of days off, and I did play some video games, which were enjoyable to say the least. I restarted the Outer Worlds because I made that terrible decision to go all crazy on my first playthrough, which put me in a very terrible place in the game. And I made the smart decision just to start over and put the time back in. And I did the right thing, and I didn't kill that person. It finally came back to bite you in the butt. It. Oh my gosh, you're not even... And the game pretty much tells you, too. <laughs> the little computer is like, you killed her? What? She did nothing. What is wrong with you? Really? Why? K- kind of. It's not that elaborate, but that's kind of how it felt. Because <laughs> you go, oh yeah, by the way, this person's dead. And the game goes, well, that was stupid, so I guess you got to go to this place instead of this other place, and you're probably going to die. So, yeah, good luck. Yeah, you had to go to, to a planet that is higher level than you probably are. There's a bunch of beasties on it, and I went to that planet before just to see what it was like, and I came back and I got the gear that I needed from this lady, but Jordan decided to kill her. Instead of getting, you get to go around basically if you if you go through her. Yeah. But he had to truck his way through all of these this muck and grime and extra monsters in order to get a place. He went through the hard way basically. Yeah, I, I really did. It was terrible, and I tried that about five or six times, and finally made it to the town. But then I couldn't actually do the mission that they had you going to do. Because you had to go back through the googly glow ghosties to just get the there. What? The goobleys and ghosties and the there's no the, ghosts. The acid monsters and the terribleness. You had to go back through that so you could go do the quest. And I was still getting ganked by him. And so I was like, you know what? I've tried loading a previous save. I still killed the lady in that save. And so I just started a whole new game. And I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna kill you. I did, I, I can't do that. There's so much. There's so much distance because it doesn't make any narrative sense for you to, because the point of the, the, the narrative of the game says, by the end of it, you will save these people. That's the story of the game. But narratively, having a complete sociopath that kills anyone but that looks at you cross-eyed, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's never made any sense in any game. I know you did the same thing in Red Dead. Oh man, Red Dead was entire, so much the, fun. The entire point of Red Dead is redeeming Arthur so making him a complete black hat doesn't really make any sense to me and I, I could never do that yeah it definitely just sometimes you just get the itch man nope. 
Yeah, I know. I never get the itch, and you don't get an itch either. That's just the way you play. That's true. That is true. Uh, but I definitely have seen the error of my ways, and it'll probably be a couple games until I do it again, but I will not be... Mm-hmm. I'll do my darndest not to kill anybody else in Outer Worlds. Actually, I mean, there are plenty of people you can kill. Actually, I lied. I did kill somebody. Oh, my gosh. They, they asked me to. It was a job. They asked you to kill them. Not them, but the person that gave me the job to kill them. They asked me to kill that person, so yes. <laughs> okay. They were like, hey, this... Go kill this person. All and right. Of course, you're blind. I was like, oh. Yes, sir, mister. <laughs> my, even my companions were like, hey, boss, that's, that's such a good idea. Get back to the ship. But, boss. Nah, man, you're going back to the ship. Was this one of the first missions that you did? Uh, on yes, the, it was, wasn't it? On the new planet I'm oh, on? New, on the new planet. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like past to the point because, you know, I didn't kill that lady, so I can go do the, <laughs> I can go do the rest of the missions now. And the game is rolling. The game's rolling. I'm still upset that I it, can't get it to play. I know. I'm sorry. It sucks. I made you. I don't know. I think you have to, I think it's on Epic though, which is I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to buy anything on Epic, but I, I do want to play that game. So if I can find it, I may just end up buying it on PS4. I don't know. I just wish it would work on Game Pass. Yeah, that that would be nice. I've I've definitely seen some people having problems here and there. I thought mine crashed the other day because I launched it and I was saving. And it crashed probably three times in a row of me trying to load back in the game. And I was really worried that it was broken, but happily it didn't break. So I'm, I'm really glad that I was able to play it and it didn't mess up. So. I really like that I played, but unfortunately I just, I can't get the game to install or launch or anything. Yeah, it definitely acts stinky stupid sometimes. I am grateful that we are doing the podcast, but I really want to go play some of that new Destiny that's out right now. Oh, yeah. I'm, so bad. Okay, no, I do not. It's it's 1130 at night. I do not. I want to go to bed. I don't want to go play Destiny. I, but I got an itch for it, I man. I am interested in the new, uh, the new season, definitely. I really, really like... I, I was one level away from, I think at level 25 or 26, you get a gold Ingram. Oh, man. And I was one level away. I had... 10 minutes or so I was playing this morning and I wanted to get it but I couldn't get it before the, the server shut down to uh, to relaunch and get the update dang that sucks I, I actually thought about spending five dollars to buy a level <laughs> to get uh, the gold Ingram yeah well that's okay man by this by the weekend rolls around Zer will be back and he'll be selling some goodies that's true so and who knows what he's gonna have this weekend you know with it being a new season I'm definitely excited for that if you ever need to find him, you can just look at wheresxer.com. I, I love that website so much. It is definitely helpful. You don't have to go through every crevice of every every planet. I do wonder how the guy gets does he does he search for the guy or is there does Destiny 2 blog say something or what the deal is there? So Zer is at the same place every time. He just rotates where he's at. So sometimes he'll be at the tower. Sometimes he'll be on Titan in his Wait, little he goes shack. To the tower sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, in Destiny One, he would just be in random places in the tower, but he would be at one of X amount of places every time he would show up. Okay. So in this game, they put him out in the world, so he'll either be in the little shack where Titan is, or he'll be at the tower. Or he'll be... So he has a set location on every planet. Correct. And they have a team okay. that goes and sits at each one of those locations. And then they go, hey, Zer's at this place. And then the two people that are streaming go find him, do their little bit. So they, they live stream, I think, an hour before. And then I think an, a half an hour after Zer appears. So they do the little clip, upload it to YouTube so everybody can know. And then they update the website, what he has, and they kind of talk about, you know, hey, this is this is good if you're trying to do this build. This weapon's really good. Oh, we've never seen this weapon before. You know, and then sometimes they buy an engram and they're like, oh, this is what you can get from the engram. So it's really informative for people that are exotic collecting or just want something new to spice up Destiny 2. Yeah, yeah, totally. It makes sense. I, I'm really still enjoying that game. I think it's got a bright future. I also played Apex for the first time in probably a month. I think the last time I played was probably probably the Halloween events. I had a few friends that wanted me to play, but here's the kicker: I had to play on a console. 
What'd you think? I think it was horrifying. <laughs> it was so weird to play with a controller. I haven't played, I haven't played ever played Apex with the controller. There's a bunch of different controls, a bunch of different buttons. Like each uh, thing you do has a different button. It's I I really did not like it. Whoa, I so. played Pathfinder, but the only thing I felt I could do effectively was use my uh, grappling hook. Besides that. I was awful. I had fun though, just because you know I played with my buddies and whatnot. We didn't win any. We played for a few hours. I don't know when I'll go back to Apex. Maybe if they add crossplay, I can go play with them. But I do think that, that it's a great game, and as long as they keep the keep it up to date, support it, that they have a chance to you know keep a thriving community. And then the last game I played was Darkest Dungeon. Really, really liked that game. I think it came out in 2017 or so. I bought it. I think during the Steam Winter Sale way back then, really enjoyed it. It's kind of a dark tone comic book RPG strategy turn based thing. Super cool. You, you kind of go down into this dungeon, the darkest dungeon, and try to find uh, all the secrets to this family and kind of try to save the soul of the family. Basically, there's a bunch of eldritch horror and um, spooky things like that. Really, really enjoying it. You a lot of your uh, team is going to die they're kind of I don't want to say it's the point that they die but you're basically hiring them and uh, as workers who re realize that they might die you have to maintain their sanity meter you can upgrade their weapons and their um, you have to heal some bad traits or sometimes they get good traits and they might get um, plus 10 against like some kind of something called valor or something that makes it to where they get extra strength against Eldritch Beast or they might get something like a Fear of the Dark <laughs> which might decrease their health or their sanity meter or something and obviously it's bad to be scared of the dark if you're in a game called, called Darkest Dungeon <laughs> I can just imagine like hey man I know you uh, I know you already paid us up front but uh I'm just gonna go for the day okay it's, it's like no you were, uh, you're going to get down in that dungeon, buddy. Yeah, you better get down in there. I'll, I'll pay you and I'll feed you, but you better do your job. That's right. I really like the art style of that game. That it's, is it for looks sure. It so cool. It does look really cool. It looks like straight out of something uh, Dark Horse comic-esque. Yeah, it's very comic booky. I probably 10 to 15 hours in, I restarted. I, I think I'm on the second difficulty. The... Uh, the difficulty settings are a little weird because it, on uh, the the lowest difficulty, it says that it recommends that this is the you know what new players do. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I had to go in the middle option, even though all options say that it's supposed to be difficult. Even the the, the low option says this is it's still difficult. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I I started a game on the quote unquote easy section. I played for five minutes or so. And I quit, deleted it, and I had to start a new one on the middle option. I, I couldn't play it easy. I just couldn't do it. It's not in me. It's in me. I pl I'm playing The <laughs> Outer Worlds on story mode or whatever the... No. Yeah. Really? Yep, I just want the story, man. That's not, an hard, that's not a hard game. I know. I played How the... How did you know? I played the first three hours of the game on... Wait, you're only three hours in? Yeah. I did some lollygagging. But you know, so I it took a it took a lot trying to get past those acid beasts after. Well, yeah, like that's not because you're you're doing it the hard way. Yeah, so now I'm just you know I just want to I just want to enjoy the story, and maybe I'll change the difficulty later. But for now, I just wanna I want to have a good story. Wow. What? Ready right here? Yep. And the last thing I guess I did was watch The Irishman. Me and Jordan watched this together. Late last week, maybe, and it's really good. I liked it a lot, but it's so long. It is so long. Three and a half hours, I think. There were times where I was just thinking, why did I make this decision? <laughs> what am I, am I in a, th there, were a, there was a time where I, I swear that it was only about probably 15 or 30 minutes of the actual movie, but I, I would have bet dollars to donuts that it was at least an hour. But no, I think we paused it to get a drink or something or something like that. And I looked and there was still like an hour and 30 left. And I was like, 
Wh- what? How the is this movie in a t- putting so me? Long. Is this movie putting in myself a time paradox? It is so long. It's I think it's longer than Avengers in game. As long as that movie is, it is still enjoyable, and I liked watching it. Yeah, I definitely recommend it, especially if you like crime thrillers or if you like old school mobster movies, if you yeah. like Scorsese movies. Rob De Niro. It's definitely a period piece. More old school actors. But yeah, if you kind of miss the old type of movies, I would definitely check it out. I'll take a couple pee breaks, get some snacks, and uh, settle in. It's a long ride, though. It definitely is. I. It makes me wish that I could see more things from that time period, because it's definitely not like how times are now. Now, moving on to the opening news, or what I have tentatively titled Leaks and Sneak Peeks. Yeah, that's right. First up, over on PC Gamer, it seems that Outlast is getting a new game, although it might not be quite what you want. It is going to be a co-op horror romp, as PC Gamer puts it. Although there does not seem to be any kind of release date or even a window. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe next Halloween or so. They have VR glasses on in the game, so I'm kind of wondering if it's going to be VR, maybe. I can't, just can't get over this promotional poster they have for it. It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> that guy on the right looks so intense. He is into it. Oh, he wow. <laughs> he is a gamer with a capital G, man. He is just ready to go. Oh, for sure, for sure, definitely. Although this is in the Outlast universe, it's going to be Apparently, some kind of a mystery in the Cold War. So, uh, any horror fans or Alice fans, get hyped. Moving on from the undead to Dead Cells, Eurogamer brings us an article talking about Dead Cells' first paid DLC, The Bad Seed, is going to be up early next year. For- yeah, they had. I think they had some DLC this year, but it was free. Mm-hmm. Dead, Cells, Dead Cells is a great game, kind of a Metroidvania roguelike ish thing. It's on Game Pass. It's on pretty much everything you can think of um, besides phones. And it might be on phones. I'm not sure. So, uh, if you're interested in that type of game, definitely go check Dead Cells out. It was on a bunch of people's games of the, game of the year list. And definitely, I'm sure it won some Game of the Years. If, if you like that type of game, it's kind of a uh, kind of a must must play. Yeah, they did mention that the price is going to be $4.99 U.S. Oh, really? That's it? Mm-hmm. So convert that to whatever your particular currency is, and that's how much you'll have to pay for it. Uh, and they did promise a, quote, a little present for holiday season this year, end quote. Interesting. I'm, I'm definitely interested in that. Next up, we got some PlayStation... Nope. We got some Bayonetta news. Bayonetta and Vanquish are getting a $10... No, sorry. 10th anniversary bundle coming to PlayStation 4. It's going to be a combo pack, which is going to launch February the 18th of next year. I am so far behind on Platinum games. I haven't played either of the Bayonetta games. I haven't played Vanquish. I haven't played the new game. Uh, crap, what's the name of that game? Uh, the new one on Switch, the Chains game. Oh, Astral Chains. Astral Chains. I haven't played... Uh, Near Automata. There's so many games I need to play by them. I don't think I've played a single one of their games ever. I do own Bayonetta though. I got it when it was 99 cents during a random Steam sale. That's so cheap. Yeah, so I probably should play that sometime. I've, I've got to play these games. As much as I love fast, fluid combat, Platinum is kind of the king of that, and I have not played very many of their games, so it's, it's kind of sad. This bundle does look amazing though. Like, the fact that they get this sweet-looking steel, double-sided steel book. I don't need any more crap in my life, but this looks pretty sweet. Yeah, that would be kind of... I know people like that. We also got our release date for Persona 5R, the deluxe edition of the the Smash JRPG, which is, I guess, similar to the Persona 4 Golden, which came out years ago for the Vita. It's going to be launching on March 31st of next year year nice this whole edition looks amazing especially with the limited edition steelbook and all those other cool doodads you get with it i still haven't played this game because i still in the back of my mind am 
hoping mm-hmm. that one day I'll get the itch to finish playing Persona 4 Golden. I mean, they don't even been to do anything. Either. I, I know, I know. I just want to appreciate Persona 4 Golden for what it is because I know it's an amazing game. I just haven't brought myself to sit down and play it. I need someone to kidnap me and take me on a very long car trip where I don't have to pay attention or interact with anybody and all I have to do is sit there and then I can enjoy Persona. Couple of card game news for you. The Elder Scrolls Legend is basically dead. Man, they pulled a valve on this one. <laughs> they said, quote, We decided to put any new content development or releases on hold for the foreseeable future. End quote. Man, they are not playing. Uh, just to further go on with what they said, they said, quote, New expansions and other future content, however, are no longer under active development. Well, they just pretty much said, listen, we're not going to do anything else with this game, so don't get your hopes up. Yeah, according to this uh, Kotaku article, apparently they, they had a previous roadmap that said that there was going to be one more card set before the end of the year, but that apparently has just been completely scrapped. I guess they just weren't. It wasn't going. <laughs> it was driving off the road. They did not like the way it was going, and they just decided to jump ship now. Yeah, I guess they're not planning on shutting it down, at least not yet. So it must be making some money. I thought it was doing okay. I mean, considering it was coming to Switch. So did it come to, did it come to Switch? I the th- Lord of the Rings got card game, I think, came to the Switch. I know Elder Scrolls Legends got announced, but I don't know if it's going to... I don't know if it actually came to the Switch or not. I kind of just heard about it, we talked about it, and then I l- forgot about it. I don't remember that at all. And it, it wasn't on my radar. It doesn't mean anything. So... Who knows? Poor Bethesda, they just, you know. We also got actually more card game news. This one, this time over on Engadget, and talking about Gwent. It's shutting down on consoles. You know, for me, I think that that's one of my favorite places. We've talked about how the Switch would be a perfect card game. Uh, well, this was never on the Switch. To be I know. Fair. True. But I was just saying how it is nice to be able to play a card game on a console. You know, I guess the PS4 and the Xbox One aren't very portable, but that's beside the point. It sucks that Gwent's leaving consoles, though. I do think that this would be cool to play on the Switch. I think I think the Switch would be, would be a good... I agree with you. I think that would be a great way to play games, but it looks like they're focusing on mobile, but just not that kind of mobile. It's on the iOS and it's coming to Android as well. It's going to, uh, according to this article, on December the 9th, there's gonna, they're going to stop. They're going to freeze them in the current state is the way Engadget puts it. So I'm assuming no updates, no more card sets. And then they're going to stop working on the June the 9th of next year. Okay. Uh, for those of you that are curious, there is going to be a website that you can visit to transfer your progress onto a GOG account, which is uh, CD Projekt Red's PC, like, little hub for everything. Their it's, it's their Steam. It's Thank their, you. their storefront. Thank you. I couldn't put the words in that. And that GOG account is going to be used by both PC and mobile versions of that game. So, that's awesome. I love that they're giving people the, trans, the capa- capability to transition their accounts from console into PC and mobile. I actually like Gwent quite a bit, and it seems that it's at the very least more more successful than Bethesda's attempt at an online card game. And it's one Gwent is one of the best games within a game, probably of all time. It is the little bit of it that I have played, I did enjoy, and I will say, speaking from personal experience, it is really nice to have a card game on mobile. And I'm just speaking from the uh, perspective of Shadowverse being on mobile. So I will say that it is really nice to be able to whip out your phone and play a card game every once in a while. Next up, Xbox has... T- actually, Xbox and Nintendo have tweeted that MLB The Show, the very popular PlayStation exclusive baseball league video game franchise will be coming to their platform sometime in the future. Get hyped, all you people who like that boring sport. The Game Awards' Ken Levine has revealed that there will be around 15 new games plus more stuff at the upcoming Game Awards, according to Push Square. And finally, according to The Verge, Microsoft is planning on releasing multiple tiers of the upcoming Xbox Scarlet, 
there's going to be a higher tier console called the Anaconda and a lower tier called the Lockhart. Seems I'm sure these are going to be different prices, perhaps have different specs and whatnot. But it shows that the idea of the all digital edition or the One S are not dying with this console generation. Do you have any thoughts on any of those last three pieces of leaks and sneak peeks? So, going forwards and backwards, the MLB The Show has been an interesting game to me because who would want to play a game about the most boring sport ever? I just don't agree with it, but I know there's Any people... Soccer? Yes. Got them. That's right. <laughs> I know there... gave away MLB The Show 18, I think, or 19, one of those, for the, uh, not the Switch, Ooh. for the uh, PS Plus members. Oh, I need to re-up my PS Plus member. I haven't had it in a couple months. Wow, he's a scrub. I am a scrub, you know? Had different Had different priorities, you know? Well, I could have just paid for the year, but that's another point. Anyway, uh, I'm excited for Christmas Before Christmas. I really in, I really love watching the Game Awards. It's always sweet to see what they come up with, announcement-wise and production-wise. And it's just a fantastic show, and I look forward to watching it. And it's really cool to see them continue to come out with different versions of the Xbox and giving people options that isn't just one single box. It's nice to be able to see them, you know. Diversify. Thank you. That is the word I was looking for. Cherry on top. Wonderful job. Moving on to the new games. This week, you can get Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection for the Switch, which is out now. Yes, that is going to include Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue. That is correct, as I drink some of my beverage. Shovel, Shovel Knight. King of Cards and Shutdown are out now. Shutdown? Showdown. That says Showdown. Man. Hall of Walrus Switch is out now. Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries is out now for PC. GTFO is out now for the PC. Good thing we're rated explicit. Destiny 2 Season of the Dawn is available now on everything. And then finally, Overwatch, the new patch, the long-awaited patch, which nerfs tanks across the board. It's out now, along with the new Christmas event. As so up- get your new skins, and enjoy Orisa not having, not being unkillable. Wait, no. Enjoy Orisa being killable. There you go. As a up-and-coming top 500 player, yes. how do you feel about this patch? I... And not very good, but I haven't played any of the tanks yet. But I did play one or two games on the patch, and I can tell you almost nothing. That's wonderful. As someone that hadn't played Overwatch in probably eight months, I can tell you <laughs> that this game is I it's going much more than that, really. It's going places. They're doing great things. And they're really listening to the players. And they're not. They're taking six months in between patches. That's true. That's only a slight hyperbolic statement. I mean, Jeff Kaplan's got to do something when he's not rolling around in money. I mean, he's obviously doing a really good job on Overwatch 2. Moving on to the big news. As the end of the year is just over the horizon, Sony decided to draw one more state of play before the end of the decade. Although most of the news was expected or leaked, we got a peek behind the curtain for some up co- for, bleh, for some upcoming projects. Thank you to Kotaku for compiling the list because I did not want to. First up, hit indie untitled goose game. Got a release date for the PlayStation 4. You will, will be able to enjoy the house house goose sim in less than a week on December the 17th. Are you excited for this game? I like goose, geese, gooses, gusses? Gus. I like Gus's. Gussels. Goosenans. That's too far. I like those animals. Uh, Gussels? Sure. All of them. I don't well, like this. He calls them a duck. So if it says pretty yeah. abhorrent, I mean, if, I'm, if I'm honest. Does that mean offensive? It can be. Okay, yeah. So I like those animals. Not too hot about this game, though. 
I think it looks kind of interesting. I don't think I'll play it, though. It, oddly enough, made me really want to play the farming simulator games that have tickled my fancy for a very long time. I just never jumped in that universe. That's okay. That's weird. Yeah. I like how when it, when the uh, commercial came on, you thought you didn't think it was a game. No. Even though we were watching a presentation for video games. Yep, I did. I thought it was just part of the opening ceremony. There was no opening ceremony. There, there should have been a twenty-minute video on PlayStation website. There should have been. I next would've... up, after a decade of, <laughs> next up after over a decade. Of waiting, fans of Kingdom Hearts finally got the third entry in the JRPG action hack and slash game franchise. Now we have a little more information on the upcoming Remind DLC coming to PlayStation 4 on January the 23rd and Xbox One on February the 25th. The story of the DLC seems to take place soon after the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 as characters speak of story beats from the end of the game in the trailer. This also seems to be a fairly substantial package with new playable characters boss battles, and more. Rewind will cost you $29.99 US or your local equivalent. To me, this means that we're not anywhere closer to getting Kingdom Hearts 4. 3 just came out. I have high expectations, okay? You shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. I've waited my whole fucking life to play Kingdom Hearts 3. How rude! <laughs> well, That's a rude word. Well, it's true, and... They feel like they just didn't give me everything I wanted to see in Kingdom Hearts 3. They gave, me, they gave us a bunch of stuff we didn't want. That's right. As much as I like Frozen and Let It Go, why'd you give me a world that was pointless to the story? And also, I'm not even going to get into a rant about that. Go listen to our Kingdom Hearts 3 episode if you want to hear my thoughts on that, but that's not the point. Anyway, what I, I was trying we, to say. Do we have a Kingdom Hearts 3 episode? Do we not have a Kingdom Hearts 3 episode? Probably not. I don't care. It doesn't matter. We're anyway. not going to have one if we don't have one now. Exactly. <laughs> so... This is, I I get they had to work on it, yada yada, etc. The some of the voice acting is this in this is hilarious. <laughs> there is a, there are, there are a couple lines that feel a little phoned in. <laughs> Just first take. Mainly Riku. We've been searching for Sora forever, and we haven't found him yet. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I'm okay. going home. That's a you you. That's a little too good. I think it was more like. We've been searching for Sora forever. We haven't found him yet. It's like, wow. You want to redo that? No. Getting past Riku's really awkward voice acting in some of the scenes, the $30 price tag is what gets my goat more than anything. After paying... Wait, why, why does that get your goat? I wanted it to be 20 bucks. Does that $10 make that big of a difference? I mean, this looks... Pr- Pretty substantial to me. Like I said, those, those new boss battles, the new playable characters you're going to be able to play as Kyrie. Uh, there's actual story. That, I don't know yet, but I'm hoping and I'm kind of getting the vibe up for this that this is going to be similar to some of the Witcher 3's DLC. D- big, meaty DLC that actually deserves to be paid for. Now, granted, I'm not mad about having to pay for it. I just wish get your goat. Yeah, I just wish it was twenty dollars instead of thirty dollars. That's all. That's really the only argument. And I mean, thirty dollars isn't cheap, but I I, I want to wait and see what all it entails. True. I just feel that I already paid sixty bucks for the game, and I'll pay them twenty more, but thirty more. You know, do I really want to? I don't know, do you? I mean, am I gonna give them thirty dollars? Yeah. If they, for some reason, make this $40, am I going to give it to them? Probably. Because, you know, I really like Kingdom Hearts, even though I can sit here and complain about it and also praise it in the same sentence back and forth all day. Kingdom Hearts 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. Kingdom Hearts 3 is a great game, but it's not... It's something It's not incredible. Excuse me. It is... Man, that game, it was whiplash. I'm surprised that they're going that they're going to be answering, seemingly answering some of these questions we have. Where did Sora go at the end of the game? You know, what is this? One of the organization members is talking about this box. It seems like we're going to get answers to that. And the game just came out a year ago. Yeah, it was really interesting to see that. Hey, 
we're not going to leave you in the dark for 10 more years. Here's a little bit more story. Yeah, now. that's nice. I'm hoping, I am hoping that this is going to be hours longer. You know what I mean? Maybe have a boss rush mode. Maybe have, you can play as every, a bunch of new characters. That'd it be awesome. looks like it. It looks like there are going to be a lot more playable characters. And for anybody that enjoys Kingdom Hearts or is thinking about, you know, still trying to on the fence about it, I would say you definitely should check this out. For sure, definitely. Also announced was the release date of the upcoming Predator game, April 24th next year. Dreams will be out on February 14th. More footage from the Square Enix and Platinum game, Babylon's Fall, which looks really cool, by the way. An- another Platinum game I'm sure I'll forget to play. I might jump onto that train to play Babylon's Fall. It looks pretty sweet. The Battle Royale game, Spellbreak, is getting a PlayStation beta next year. A new VR game called Paper Beast. Man, that game looks so stupid. Just, uh, it looks kind of... I think it looks kind of creepy. I don't like it. And also, the water mechanics look real terrible. Now, granted, am I an animator? Can I do cool-looking water animatics? Yes! Exactly. So, get better, and I'll email you my resume. <laughs> and finally, a puzzle game titled Super... 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 Super Liminal, I think is what it's called. Thank you. This game actually looks pretty cool. It plays with perspective. For example, at the opening of the trailer, you walk up and your character sees a PlayStation 4 DualShock. It's a DualShock controller. And you pick it up, and when you pick it up, it instead of being the size of a normal PlayStation controller, it becomes massive and kind of just falls to the floor. So it looks really interesting. Oh, yeah, I remember watching that. I just never caught the title of that game. I think I'd enjoy that. Although, with it being a... Uh, VR game. Actually, not that's a not, VR. That's not a VR game. Thank goodness. I In my head, I thought it was a VR game, and I was like, that would definitely make me throw up. I thought it was going to be a VR game, but it did. I don't think it ever said that it was that it was one. Okay. Plus, it was also revealed that more information on the upcoming Ghost of Tsushima will be revealed at this year's Game Awards. Heck yes. Yeah, that's what I'm super excited about. Um, I never thought about it until I was actually watching this uh, trailer for Ghost of Tsushima. But it seems that game developers are kind of exploring Japan more the past few years. I'm, I mean, I'm not weeaboo, but it actually is kind of a... There's plenty of games that have come out of Japan. But as far as a more of a historical context, or at least inspired by historical context, it's kind of a well that hasn't really been explored. We've got plenty of medieval Europe, European games. But as far as Japanese... Samurai games, ninja games, more factual games, such such as Ghost of Tsushima. Um, we're getting more lately. Th- this, the Neo series, has, has become very popular, which obviously it's not completely based in factuality, but it does that does have some historical context. Plus the the, the new FromSoft game, uh, Sekiro, just came out. So it's interesting to see a new avenue get explored like that. I am interested in that game. The name just escapes me, but it's set in Japan, modern age Japan, and everybody disappears in the trailer. Oh, it's a Ghost Wire, I think yeah. it was called. I'm, I look forward to more information about that, and I will be playing that because it looks pretty sweet. Yeah, that, that's why the creators... Of, I said yeah really loudly. That's why the creators of... Oh, man, I'm drawing a blank. It's fine. Evil Dead? No, not Evil Dead. The Evil Within, the horror game franchise. Ah, there you go. Yeah, so I'm definitely definitely excited for for that game as well. I am hyped for the game hordes, man. Yeah, me too. And then last but certainly not least, it turns out all the leaks surrounding the Resident Evil franchise were in fact real. Right as the show was ending, it was revealed that Project Resistance would not be a standalone project, but would be the multiplayer mode for the upcoming Resident Evil 3 remake. The sequel to this year's critically acclaimed RE2 remake will be coming out April 3rd of next year. It's great to get some good news from Sony as Jim Ryan has just told Game Informer in a recent interview that sadly, there will be no Vita 2. Rip. Wah, wah. You know, I didn't have high hopes for the Vita 2. No, I don't think many people did. But I was still wishing. You know, I mean, you don't play your Vita 1. I know, man. I know. Scallywag. I just, I just gave up. Scallywag? Yeah, that works. I don't think people say Scallywag anymore. I will say, I was on the train for the good old in MMO, light, Resident Evil sort of a thing. I MMO know, light? Yeah. I say MMO light because in my head, I wanted it to be an MMO light, 
in the same genre as Destiny 2 so that we could play it together because I know you wouldn't play a full-fledged MMO with me. So, when were you thinking this? Just in the sense of them talking about uh, Project Resistance. We saw what Project Resistance was. Resistance was months ago. I know. I still didn't believe it. I was still hoping that that was just like a fake teaser and that it was actually really going to be an MMO. So, but this is so this is definitely a much smarter move. Oh my gosh. Marketing wise, how am I supposed to? How am I supposed to converse with you? Oh my, I guess, man. So this is a much better, smarter marketing move for them to bundle it together with Resident Evil Three, which this remake looks insanely awesome yeah we didn't get a whole lot but honestly we didn't need it resident evil resident evil 2 remake is easily one of my favorite games this year it's one of my favorite games in a while uh it's so pretty the controls feel great it, it's visceral it uh the puzzles are fun but not brain breaking hard and miss uh mr x is mr x uh is one of the scariest components that I've had in a game in a long, long time. Actually, that game actually made me nervous, which does not happen, period. He's got nerves of steel, man. I got nerves of steel. I still need to get my 3DS down and let you play uh, the 3DS versions of Resident Evil and see if you enjoy them. I think you'd like them. Maybe, maybe. I could I could see it. I like Resident Evil a lot. It's, and it's not that I don't jump scare or scare, really, but this is different. It made me think... When he wasn't there, I was thinking, is that him? Do I hear him? And that's the sign of tense horror. Yeah, they did a really good job with Resident Evil 2. And they didn't even have to... They blessed us with the trailer. They didn't even have to show us this. They could have just put Resident Evil 3 remake on the screen. That's it. 2020. Done. I might be getting this for PC just because of the uh, multiplayer component. That would be cool. It's nice that they're bundling those two together. I'm sure they probably could have sold whatever it's called, whatever it's called, Project Resistance, mm-hmm. um, separately. I, yeah, separately for twenty or thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. They ex- they Jordan would have complained if it was thirty dollars, but if it was twenty, you know, thirty dollars—that's just too much money, man. I just can't do it. Okay, I got got to put a little money here, a little money there. Got to do my card game addiction stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely. I just, you know, money is, uh, you know. Money's tight. That's right. But luckily... No Vita 2, though, I will say real quick. That that stinks. Um, That does I really like my Vita. And uh, maybe sometime in the the far future, there will be a successor to the Vita. Yeah, I would would really love to see Sony or Microsoft, for that matter, do another handheld. Well, not for Microsoft, because they had never done one. But, you know... I digress. I would like to see either company do a updated handheld version. Definitely. So. Me too. Another popular video game has announced the end of their loot box monetization system. According to Gama Sutra, popular esports Rocket League has added a new storefront where you can purchase cosmetics instead of loot boxes. In the store, you will be able to purchase a rotating selection of items and blueprints similar to Apex Legends Store. Earlier this year, Psychonix the makers of Rocket League were purchased by Fortnite creators Epic. Loot boxes have become somewhat controversial as of late, and Epic has experienced monetizing games without them. I think this is awesome. I'm really glad for games where you can just, one, I love cosmetics and games. You know, it's just a great thing. And two, I love the fact that you can just go in and be like, I want that car, I want that skin, or that spoiler. I don't know if it goes that in-depth with Rocket League, who knows. But I like the fact that you can just go, hey, I want that. That's the one I want. I don't have to <laughs> roll and hope I get the thing I want out of the loot box. Yeah, it, it is nice. Even as someone who, I don't want to say defends loot boxes, but very much understands them and doesn't really see a problem with them, it's nice that you know exactly what you, you're getting. Although I will say, I saw an article, I don't remember who it was, so I don't want to throw anybody under the bus here. But they were they, their article was titled... Something like Rocket League has a new storefront and it's very expensive. Here's the thing, though. If you don't want loot boxes, if you want to buy skins separately, they're going to be expensive. That's just how it is because they're not making nearly as much money if you can buy the skin directly. It's just this is the same thing in Apex. They have some amazing skins. You can buy them straight up, but they're $10, $15, $20 per skin. 
I also think of it as the way of as someone had to design this skin. So you got to put some money towards that design team, as well as sometimes mechanically they have to make things act and work differently in the game. You know, like some some skins have different effects than some other skins and different stuff like that. So sometimes they have to make it work a little. No, that makes no sense. game I've played that I I won't play a game that does that. Yeah, the, that's 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 pay to win. No, no, you just described pay to win. Sorry. Dang it. That's not what I was saying. I'm talking when I say mechanically, I don't mean like core mechanics of the game. I mean maybe your melee attack would be different That's or pay to win. No, no it's not. Not different as in more power, just a different It doesn't matter. If you change if you change they they have no no competitive game will ever change the way the mechanics of a character works based on a cosmetic that is that ch- fundamentally changes the game you cannot do that it will 100% break the game I was speaking purely to non-competitive non-esports games Exa- like what? Revelation Online MMORPG sounds I don't know how it sounds it is a lot of the stuff but in the, the MMO RPGs you play not have competitive. They have PvP. That's competitive. But scrub the particular cosmetic cools. Pay to win. You mean? I mean all MMO RPGs are pay to win. They all, might be. I don't know. All of them. Some of them. Uh, but no cosmetics. So say if you have a sim- something simple, flaming sword, you're not gonna get extra buffs or whatever, and your attacks aren't gonna look different because you have a flaming sword it's just gonna you're just gonna have a flaming sword but your character might move a little bit differently because the sword looks different than a regular sword that's not on fire that's it makes more sense in those games than it does a competitive scene well normally I don't want to speak for that game because I never played it games are not Cosmetics are not supposed to change the hitbox of a character model because it will screw up the it will screw up hitting either with the character or hitting the character themselves. I think I'm explaining this badly because it doesn't actually change like person A is gonna hit person B. It just changes the fact of how it looks. That's like, bad though. You you see how that's bad? If I'm holding. I'm just holding up two things in my hands right yeah. now. If I see this thing in my left hand and I swing at it with my right hand, but if I miss it because it looks different, that's really bad game design. Okay, I see what you're saying. Got it. And that is going to piss off my right hand, and my right hand is going to write a strongly worded letter to my left hand because my left hand is a cheating scumbag. I can definitely see how cosmetics can be very difficult for all parties involved. And that was this week's Uncomfortable Silence segment. As we move on to the last segment of today's, or of this week's episode. Not to be left out from the fun, Nintendo also held their own mini event just before the end of the year. Yesterday, Nintendo released their Indie World video announcing the following games Axiom Verge 2 Fall 2020 Axiom Verge 2 is of course the much anticipated sequel to the original Axiom Verge apparently the guy's been working on this for years secretly secretly that's what he said he did sports story mid 2020 it is the sequel to golf story yeah I think golf story came out in 2017 I want to say it's a golf RPG. It's actually really good. This is also a golf RPG that has tennis elements in it. And I was interested in it until they started doing the sports stuff. And then I was like, I'm out. I'm not interested. Fair enough, I guess. Uh, Skatebird, late 2020. You're literally a skateboarding as a bird. (laughs) Gleam Light is going to be a character where you're turned into a sword 
and a character where you're going to be turned into a sword mm-hmm. or a game where you're going to be turned into a sword a game where your character is turned into a sword and there's a lot of stained glass <laughs> it looks pretty cool super mash it's coming out may of next year i want to say this year on the switch and well this is all switch it's indie world this is duh. nintendo's event that's right it's late i will i will be enjoying super smash Super Mash. Super Mash. We already enjoy Super Smash. That's right. I <laughs> Boyfriend Dungeon. Yeah, I don't know anything about this except you're you you're dating anime boys or something. You have weapons, and those weapons can turn into boys that just so happen to be cute, hunky, hot, sexy, and goofy. And they're single. And That's they're, what it said in the it trailer. It says it in the trailer. <laughs> and they're single. Oh man, Murder by Numbers. This game actually looks pretty cool. It's like a uh, murder mystery puzzle game. It's got some music by the creators uh, or the, by the composer of the Phoenix Wright series. So I'm actually kind of interested in this. Hmm. The Survivalist. It's going to be a yes co-op. Well, it's cre- like only co-op. It's not only co-op. There's single player and there's co-op. It's going to be in the Escapist. Escapist. Thank the you. Escapist. Or es- is it the Escapist or the Escapists? Chibi block style escape from prison universe game where now you get to survive in a Minecraft Terraria building game. With monkeys. With monkeys that are on your team that also help you do tasks. You like feed them bananas or something. Probably. And then Odd Worlds, Strangers, Wrath is coming out in January. I'm wondering if this is, is this in the Odd World universe? Like, Abe's Odyssey, aren't those? I think so. Or, I or am I crazy? I mean, we also. Our world, Abe's Odyssey. That's a thing, right? That's a PlayStation game. We might be crazy, but we also might be truthful. <laughs> you could be that. You could be both. That's true. You know, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. A little bit of both. A little bit of that. A little bit of mocha. A little bit of toast. Caramel. Okay, let's end this crap. Yep. Let's move on to the deals. So, if you have Nintendo's online service thing, you will be getting the following: Star Fox Two. That's right, the long-awaited mediocre sequel, Super Punch Out. Let's see, Su- uh, Kirby Superstar, Breath of Fire Two, and maybe Journey to Celius. I'm gonna be honest; I'm not really sure. All right, that's awesome. Boy. Wait, maybe also Chris da- Chris Dalius. Yeah, I think those last two as well. Okay. If you have Xbox Game Pass, you can get Halo Reach on Xbox Game Pass on console as well as my friend Pedro, and both of those are available on console and PC. The rest of these currently are just on console. And these are all available now except for the last one. Correct. Naruto to Bru- Naruto to Baruto, Shinobi Striker, Demon's Tilt, Wander Song, East Football, Pez 2020, Overcooked 2, Path of Logic 2. Tom Clancy's The Division. That's the original Division. Who who who's playing the original Division? There's people out there that got love for that man. I it ain't me, but I'm sure there's people <laughs> that love it. Okay. And then, I don't know who hasn't moved on to the Division too. Uh, the, the people that are going to be playing this game, uh, and the last one that is going to be available December seventeenth is going to be Untitled Goose Game. All right, and then the final deal deal we have here is check out Follow Seventy Six now. It is having a free weekend. Should be free forever. And then finally, it is time for Metacritic Madness. So, this week, it's going to be Dark Souls 2, which I will admit is probably not as good as Dark Souls 1 or 3. Ranked 157th out of 300. Thank you, Game Informer. It came out in 2014 for PS3, 360, and PC. Dark Souls thrived on making players discover its secrets for themselves, which made returning to the formula a daunting challenge. Dark Souls 2 handled it wonderfully by shaking up just enough of its brutal challenge that returning players couldn't rely on old knowledge about stats, combat, and enemies to expedite their journey through the mysterious land of Jorganiclic. Bosses? could be around any corner and pounce out of nowhere in one case. And more streamlined multiplayer meant players had to watch out for more 
invading foes, but could easily recruit friends to their cause. Despite these changes, Dark Souls 2 stayed true to its roots, giving players the powerful mix of eerie landscapes, tough encounters, and op- obscure lore that had made the series so captivating in the first place. Okay, so before I get into this, I just want to say that one, you're supposed to capitalize the word I, and two, you should use a couple periods if you're going to write an entire, par- entire paragraph. So, let's jump into it. Okay, not capitalized. If you don't know what Dark Souls 1 is, well, save yourself some suffering and avoid this game. I only played this game offline. I don't know if online it's the way it's meant, meant, M-E-N-T, meant, to be played, but man, after three hours I hated this game more than anything before in my life. Dry, I don't know what that means. Lame, no music, or immersion, feeling. Monsters that one shot kill you. Rolling doesn't save you. Your shield works for nothing. Well, if you like DS1, this is your game. I played it after DS2, and I hate that more. Zero out of ten. The only thing I understood about any of that is zero out of (laughs) ten. Pretty much. Trash game. Trash game, 0 out of 10. That's right, don't play it. I suck, this is 0 out of 10. Yeah. Oh, man. And that's the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a review on wherever you're listening to this. Subscribe to the podcast. You can listen to the podcast on Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcast, also known as iTunes, Google Podcast, Pocket Cast. YouTube. That's right. You know, wherever you enjoy podcasts, we're there. Yep, you can uh, follow us on our Twitters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm at Ryan Divisions. Jordan is at Swaylock. You can follow the podcast at Want to Be Podcast on Twitter. And on Instagram. That's right, Want to Be Gaming on Instagram. So you can check out all these and the doobly-doo. Yeah, you can also email us. Want to Be Podcast at gmail.com. And then also, uh, is there anything else? We can uh, thank uh, the Healy Brothers for the opener and Alicia for the logo. And uh, you can, Jordan is doing this anime podcast thing called uh, Subtitled. Mm-hmm. Um, you can check it out, I'm assuming, on all of the podcast services. Correct, and Ryan's doing this thing that he's calling Games Cubed. You can check out his articles that he's writing on Medium. And on this other weird app called uh, Amino Video Games. Amino Video Games. And yes. if I can figure out how to link that in the podcast description without it messing up everything, it I might would do be impossible. That. It might because Amino is stinky stupid sometimes. It is kind of weird. I will. I will say. I do enjoy it though. I need to get back on that. But that is it. We hope you all enjoy this. We appreciate your reviews. We appreciate you sharing this with friends, telling people about it. That's it for this week's episode. Though I hope everyone has a great rest of their week. Enjoy the Game Awards if you watch it, and uh, play on.